say. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 안녕하세요. 어, 우리는 블록체인어스를 운영하고 있는 재원. 네, 김태균입니다. 네. Hello world, this is uh, Blockchainers, and uh, I, I'm a host. Sorry, just. Uh... Yeah, hello world, this is uh, Blockchainers, and uh, this is Taegun. I'm a, a host to the uh, new host to the uh, Blockchainers, and then uh, also host to the uh, uh, Blockchainers a sibling channel called Mr. Blockchain. And here is a J1. And please, yeah. I'm just a new member from the Blockchainers. And nice to meet you. And hi, Snappy. And we here have uh, Brian Snappy from a Pivx community. Uh, hey, hi guys. The... Thanks. Hello. Thanks for having me and and all of Pivx on. <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, pe like um, like before we start about interview, like I want to hear about like, can you briefly introduce yourself and what you do in the Pivx community or entire pivx sure um so yeah again my name's brian uh, dorian my crypto handle uh is snappy um so that's uh people often ask hey how did that come to be um i i've been in cryptocurrencies uh since about 2011 2012 um and and back in the day i mean there was a couple exchanges and you know web portal and forums etc and everybody had handles, right? Like that's what you did. You had, you know, nicknames and monikers. Um, and somebody at one point had said, man, you're really snappy about things, right? You're really fast. And so <laughs> I said, all right, I guess that's my nickname. So um, I just, I put that down and, and ever since then, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of stuck, right? So um, yeah, so I've been, I've, I've been in, as I said, I've been in crypto for, you know, a number of years, which you know, if you've been in crypto for more than eight months, you're basically, you know, an old geezer at this point. So, um, you know, I guess that makes me like a, whatever that makes me. Um, but yeah, in Pivx, I am, I'm largely called a energy Sherpa. Um, I'm a brand ambassador. I'm the face to a certain degree of Pivx, although I don't really like that phrase because Pivx is comprised of a lot of people you know, from developers and marketers, et cetera. Like we're completely decentralized in how we run our organization. So um, I represent myself as being part of Pivx uh, and yet people identify with me as, hey, you can talk to Brian, you can talk to Snappy about updates about what's going on, et cetera, right? So you can go to the YouTube channel. Um, I'm the guy that's making weekly updates and, and keeping people, you know, informed. Um, I do a lot of community management, although I'm doing less of that now because our community is incredible. Um, but I did a lot of community management with the team. And then basically it, when you're passionate, like for you guys too, when you're passionate about something, you pour yourself into it. Right. So, um, I just tend to get, and crypto tends to do that too. You get sucked in and you just love what you're doing. So wherever I can find a place to be of use, I, I tend to do that within Pivx. Great. Great. This is the first question for for your interview. Like, I'm like I'm going to start. Like, uh, Pivx probably states that it is the first to implement zero coin protocol in a proof of stake coin to achieve higher anonymity. In terms of anonymity, I would like to say Pivx is leading the privacy coin based on my technical analysis. Um, but many of us do not comprehend what the what is the buzz, and so what like. So special about it like can you face and enlighten those who are curious about it and what does anonymity means to pivx and what is the philosophical relationship in anonymity sure um so a lot wrapped up in that so if i don't if i don't answer all of the components of that one question just please remind me um so from a philosophical standpoint in ethos of why um uh, privacy or anonymity matters, um, which is part of what you know, is the core of Pivx, right? So if you read, we have a manifesto that says privacy is a right, right? Um, and what we mean by that is this, you as individuals ought to have the right to disclose information to whom you want to, right? 
Um, because a lot of times what happens in, especially in a digital age that we're in now is that your information is shared without you knowing, right? It's tapped into without your consent um, or it's embedded into 50 pages of terms and conditions uh, that can be very confusing. And so you just basically give your consent away, but legally there, everybody's okay now. Um, but it's basically a, a way to get people to collect your data, right? So what happens currently in the crypto markets, a lot of them, is this, and I use this analogy, I'm using it more, um, checks, right? The old, write a check out, right? And hand it to somebody or, you know, you let's say somebody came over to your house and was doing work and you wrote a check and paid them for the work they did, right? And that person then cashed that check in and could see into your bank account, right? And then you see every deposit in and every out and when you got paid. And let's say you didn't pay your contractor the full amount. Let's say you only gave them half. And you said, oh, I don't have any funds. But all of a sudden, they're looking at your bank account and they're going, what do you mean you don't have the funds? You've got, you've got $100,000 sitting in your bank account. So he comes over and knocks on your door. is like, hey, pay up, right? That'd be a little weird. That would be really weird if your financial bank institution allowed that site into your bank account. So that's what's going on in a lot of cryptocurrencies, right? So, and most cryptocurrencies, as we know, they're perfectly public ledgers. And every send and spend is traceable back to you, right? There's crypto forensic analysis teams that are already back mapping data of every, every send and spend, trying to identify it to you as an individual for, their, for whatever reason, right? We could speculate for whatever the reasons they are. And so within PIVX, we feel that you're, you have a right and you ought to have a right to maintain your privacy, especially when it comes to your data and financial transactions. Partially too for your protection, right? Let's 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 project two years into the future and say Pivx's, you know, had incredible gains. Bitcoin's had incredible gains, right? And now the perceived value or wealth of your crypto assets are 10x, 20x, 30x. Just speculation, right? Let's just put it out there. We're already seeing that people are being attacked, held up robbed because of what they're worth because people can track it on the blockchain right so that type of crime is only going to potentially continue so from even just that standpoint maintaining your privacy is important for your safety and security among many other things so that's that was one of the core ethos in pivx of why that matters for a lot of reasons right that financial freedom and privacy so what pivx did initially is and again Pivx launched what two little over two years now, right? So it's been around. Is uh, a a, des a desire and from a code base to say we want to be a usable cryptocurrency that maintains privacy, right, fungibility and usefulness. So a lot of that gets wrapped up into it. And you know, as people know, like build on Bitcoin Core, build on Dash Core. Um, you know, if you take a look into Dash, like. Dash pioneered a lot of things, right? Credit to them. Bitcoin pioneered a lot of things. Credit to them as well. Um, and Pivx said, that's great. We're not stopping there, right? There's ways to increase privacy, anonymity, usefulness, right? And so that was the, the reason for switching to zero coin is a much higher degree of privacy when it comes to financial transactions on a blockchain, right? And so what sets Pivx apart is this. Pivx from a algorithm of how, how all the transactions are verified is proof of stake, right? So um, with that, that, that core component combined with ZeroCoin provides a much larger anonymity set, right? I use that phrase, an anonymity set that per basically makes your transactions completely anonymous, right? Compared to a proof of work where the... I, I hate to say the term mixing because that's not really what it is, but I'll just use that for that sake where the coins go into a pool and what's pulled out is extremely higher in Pivx than it is to the other coins that are implementing zero coin, right? So um, it, it really is pushing the frontiers of privacy when it comes to blockchains, when it comes to your transactions. On top, um, do you need, if, did I answer that? Um, I, I want to make sure I covered it because I was about to jump into ZPIV staking, but I don't want to like jump into a question that you guys might have later so yeah yeah, yeah I, I think yeah your answer uh, was very clear um yeah i i personally think uh, privacy will become more important as 
uh, government intervention or official organization intervention is imminent. Uh, they are not holding down. They are just not ready yet, right? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so the customers will start looking to uh, more privacy-centric projects. And then a lot of current projects will pu also put more emphasis on improving the privacy uh, since many of the coins still uh, uh, faces yeah, a, lot, a lot of issues with the uh, privacy, as you mentioned. And uh, I think uh, Pivx is kind of jack of all trades. Like he's trying to impl implement um, POS and the uh, zero coin protocol to improve uh, privacy. And then also use those two elements to create synergy. I think that's great. Yeah, yeah. for real. Yeah. Um, Oh, the other, the other, the other really neat component that is very important for some people is having an audible ledger, right? So we are, you know, we're proof of stake, which comes with all the benefits of proof of stake. We have zero coin implemented, right? We have that ability to have an audible coin supply, which means that you can go into the blockchain, you can look at the records and see how many coins have been emitted, and validate that where in some other of the privacy technologies, that's not possible, right? You don't have a true understanding of the coin supply. So thus, in theory, if there is any, uh, I'll say nefarious, or if there's any hacking of their protocol, it would be much harder to track down if there is a, a va like a variance in their coin supply from what they said, then that's important. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, the mic was off for real. And uh, now I'll move on to the next question. It seems like a Pivx sees a reward mechanism uh, makes users less attractive to become master nodes of Pivx compared to becoming a master nodes to the other projects like Dash or whatever, uh, in terms of profitability, just terms of sure. profitability. Uh, but I personally think the CISO reward mechanism is a great model for maintaining a liquidity. However, uh, I'm curious of the uh, Pivx's pursuit of preventing centralization. Um, in CISO Real's mechanism, without, without considering the cost for the master nodes, the equilibrium is to be at 41.5%, providing uh, block wheels around 2.25 PIF. I, th I think it will be higher from next month. Am I correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. So, um, oh, well, I Oh, I didn't want to cut you off. Yeah, keep. Yeah. yeah. From next month, uh, equally to both master nodes and staking nodes. Why was uh, the equilibrium set to the uh, forty-one point five percent? Five percent. How how is this going to, as a pivot stated, prevent centralization? Yeah. So um, there'll be two components of this. Uh, why that decision was made, and then we are actually moving away from the CISO algorithm. So I'll get to that in a point. Um, so yeah, initially. There was a, uh, when they were designing the block reward of how the block reward is going to get split, right? So um, you have master nodes, and there's an incentivization in terms of the reward to running a master node, and then stakers, right? So the validators, a incentivization to actually stake your coins in the wallet and thus be able to participate in earning the block reward. So the, the thought process was this, right? Um, making this seesaw algorithm combined with our emission rate, right? So that's the other thing too, a very, very modest, decent inflation, you know, 4% inflation rate, you know, four and a half PIV every 60 seconds. It's about a 4% inflation rate of our current supply. So that seesaw would thus provide the network balance between this, right? If you have too many people, run, well, let's do this, master nodes on this side. If you have too many people running master nodes, you don't have the stabilization security of the validators, which are your proof of stakers, right? And so if you all of a sudden have a bunch of people that are running master nodes, and let's say the reward's really high to run a master node, so more people are gonna try and run a master node, you then are potentially opening up your entire ecosystem for more vulnerabilities, because you have less stakers, you have less validators in the network. Plus, now you've got a centralization, right? A large, large percentage of your coins in master nodes, so less liquidity, right? less supply in the markets, and now centralization into chunks or people that have a lot of the coin supply. So by putting it on a seesaw where if all of a sudden all these master nodes started cropping up, what it would do is say, okay, we're going to reward stakers higher. So people are going to go, yeah, I want to stake more because now I'm, I'm, I'm incentive, my incentivization is going up to stake. 
vice versa, if all of a sudden you have all these stakers going up and you don't have enough masternodes to do you know, the instant sends, to do the other network protocol functions that masternodes do, well, then we should incentivize them. So it, it was a mathematical way to try and provide an equilibrium between those two camps, um, which, in, and then you could say it would potentially help with lessening the centralization that you see in some of the other projects, because then you'd have people that want to stake more, thus coin distribution and supply versus masternodes. Now, what's happening with this is when ZPIV staking goes live, the seesaw algorithm is actually being removed, okay? For this reason, um, the way that zero coin denominations work um, is that there are specific denominations, right? There's a one ZPIV, a five, just like you have, you know, a one cent or a five cent denomination or whatever, you know, in your currency that would be for this reason that provides, that provides the privacy element, right? Because if I send a transaction to you in 3.17364 ZPIV, that's pretty, that's very specific, right? Versus if I just send a one and there's 100,000 other one ZPIV sends, much more private, right? From just somebody looking at the blockchain trying to trace transactions back and forth. So with that comes this issue of removing that seesaw and part of the point is to drive more people to stake ZPIV, right? So this is the other first for the network is ZPIV staking. And if I'm jumping too far ahead, but I think it answers the question of that'll be removed where the block reward now still will be split between masternodes and stakers. However, if you stake your ZPIV, you have the potential to earn three PIV, all right, or three ZPIV. So if you are actually the validator staking ZPIV, you will get three. If you're staking PIV, the you know, public PIVX, you will get two. And then master nodes will get two as well. So every 60 seconds, the block reward will always be two for a master node. However, it could be two if you're just staking PIV or three if you're staking ZPIV, right? So the point of that is, again, there's going to be probably a lot of people that want to stake ZPIV. Why? Much higher reward and privacy. So it's sort of a way to say, hey, PIVX network, everybody can, can participate in earning the block reward, right? So if you're a masternode holder, great, you can earn two. And there'll be more incentivization to be a masternode holder, which I can speak to in a little bit. The other side, if you're a staker, great, you can still earn the block reward, you can get two PIV. However, if you're staking, let's incentivize you to stake and to move into ZPIV because that's going to boost the privacy layers for PIVX. So just to kind of draw back a little bit, but what what's the reason why you're removing the CISO model? Is it because it's not working or is it because the new implementation is just coming? Yeah, no, it's it's working. The CISO algorithm has worked brilliantly, right? In providing sort of that balance between people that are staking and masternode holders. The reason it's being removed is um, in order to in order to have private staking. Um, the, let me let me back into this. There, there's a couple reasons. One is to help to hope to helpfully incentivize the staking of ZPIV, right? Because if more people move their PIV into ZPIV, the pool of those privacy coins gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And so thus, PIVX as a currency has an ever-increasing supply of privacy coins. There'll still be the public option, right? You can still stake PIV. You can send PIV. However, that pool of privacy coins is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And thus, you as individuals should be rewarded for it. Um, it also does come down to being able to stake um, whole denominations, right? Hmm. So like right now, if you're staking PIV, you might get 2.23 or 2.7 or whatever, because it's on a variation, right? Every block reward's being recalculated based on that ratio. So it's never a whole denomination. So in order to ensure the privacy of the people staking, it has to be a whole denomination. And doing that you know, you're not going to have that in the seesaw algorithm because in that seesaw, again, it's being recomputed every single block. So this is being split to say, you know, if you're staking ZPIV, it'll be three. If you're staking PIV, it'll be two. And if you're a masternode holder, it'll be two. And what we, what we see kind of right now is the network's in a beautiful state of equilibrium, 
right? Like it is like the, the divide between people who run masternodes and people staking, there's a nice equilibrium between the two camps. Um, you know, you could say, well, what happens now? Everybody might start staking ZPIV, right? They might move out of masternodes because they're going to be getting 50% more for staking. Yeah, that could happen. However, the flip is this, the ZDEX, which that's probably going to be a question coming up. Maybe not. The ZDEX, <laughs> right? Yeah. So in, in Z, I'll lead you to it, right? ZDEX, right? The decentralized exchange that's coming into the Pivx wallet. If you are running a master node, a decentralized, the ZDEX master node, right? So that's the protocol layer that's going to be running this whole entire decentralized network. You will actually earn the, the transaction fees in that network, right? So if you're a master node holder, you'll be getting your, you know, you'll be able to participate in getting the, the two PIV block reward. Plus when the ZDEX get in, it gets implemented, taking part in those transaction fees of that network. So thus, you know, if, you're, if you have enough for master node, great, you're gonna get block reward and you'll get those fees. However, you can also then stake and get the fees as well and actually increase the privacy of the network. And before we start, uh, I just want to tell to the, our audience, yeah, please feel free to leave your questions on the comment section. Uh, we'll pick it up uh, probably at the end of the interview and then I'll ask Brian on PF of you guys. Yeah. My next question is about ZDEX, like you mentioned earlier. Like, Pivians have really high expectation in ZDEX. Based on the description, trading fees from ZDEX will be rewarded to ZDEX nodes, as you mentioned. Like, I would like to have more detailed information how the master masternodes help secure ZDEX and like what you what, what would the anticipating transaction fee for ZDEX? Like, have dev team already came up with a simulation for the transaction fee? Yeah. Um, so this this goes to our conversation before before being live. <laughs> That's a uh, I, the information that I have about ZDEX is very minimal, right? Um, this goes to our conversation before. So this is one of those questions to say, it's a great question. Um, information about that. Um, this is what's get the developers in, uh, you know, after this call. And if people have those questions, let's begin to prepare those, get that for you and for the larger community to say, hey, here's what you can expect, um, you know, coming down the line. Uh, because I, above that, I, I honestly, I do not know at this point. So I won't. I can't speak um, critically and with integrity to what the what the transaction fees, like what those fees are going to look like, how those masternodes are actually securing the ZDEX. Um, that's that would be a brilliant question for the developers to be able to chime into. And so for viewers who are watching, um, you know, let's. I, I will take that upon myself to go back into Pivx and say let's accumulate that documentation if we can. Now the developers might might not be ready to release that, right? So that could be part of it to say, hey, they're not ready to release that information for X, Y, Z reason. Um, but at least we can then provide that back to you and say, here's when we can expect it and we'll go from there. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I guess we can just get an answer on that uh, whenever it's ready. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is and, okay yeah, to... I, I, and part of, part of it as well is I think because um, there's a lot coming in quarter one. Um, for PIV and PIVX, right, <laughs> on the roadmap. So a lot of the energy uh, focus is on meeting the goals of quarter one, you know, from, from all of the, the protocol bumps and core technologies, whether it's ZDEX, or not ZDEX, whether it's, you know, ZPIV staking, the UX UI design, the, the governance, the voting proposal. So all of that right now is sort of the focus. Um, and then, you know, ZDEX is Q2. So it's sort of a, hey, we've got now got that three month span to really flesh out and begin to provide that information for everybody. That's my gut sense of right now, it's it's crucial go time for those Q1 roadmaps. But you think the ZDEX will be on plan as it is stated in the uh, website, yeah. Q2 yep. of 2018? Yeah, I, I mean, I, uh, I, I can go out and say, looking at the past, you know, trend, past history of the developers of Pivx, um, from from the core protocols and saying, here's what we want to do, here's when we're going to deliver. Um, uh, I've seen them come through time and time and time again of what they say they're going to do and meeting those, right? Meeting those deadlines and meeting those 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 outlines of, yep, by the end of quarter two, we'll have it. So I, I have full confidence in them of meeting that. Okay. Um, this following question will be 
about ZDEX is also like um, ZDEX is impl implies that it can immediately exchange PIVX to v Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. So like, why is ZDEX so important for PIVX, right? Um, yeah. In case of Masternode, it can be really important, but like, uh, do you have a plan of ZDEX will eventually become the market for key currencies or coins such as Binance or KuCoin? Um, it's a good question. Um, you know, having, so, uh, this came up actually in, uh, when I was up in Toronto, uh, when was that yesterday, two days ago, I'm losing track of time. Um, <laughs> so, uh, one of the, one of the, one of the comments that came out was, man, it's, a, it's so slow to send Bitcoin, right? You know, thankfully the transaction fees have come down. Um, however, it's still, it, you know, it's not going to be, it, it takes time. It's not a instant transaction. It's not viable for your point of sale terminals. And it's not private, right? So this is what came out of having the ability, you know, that that importance of saying, hey, because PIVX transaction fees are so low, right? Because it's fast, you have the ability to basically exchange Bitcoin to Bitcoin, right? If you think about it, right? If I want to send Bitcoin from point A to point B, what's occurring right now is it's going from point A to point B. However, it's going about this fast, right? That's Bitcoin. And your transaction fees are, you know, it's high. It's not as high as it has been, but it's still, it's fairly high, right? Especially for microtransactions. So what you're going to have the ability to do with ZDEX, again, this is the assuming that the transaction fees are going to be lower than exchanges, right? Or lower than any centralized type of entity. Why? Because the overhead's low. We're already running masternodes, et cetera, et cetera. You have the ability to put your Bitcoin in and go, oh, ZPIV, and back out into Bitcoin. Right. So at that point, you know, because again, if I send Bitcoin into the ZDEX, convert for ZPIV to an, basically a, an instant send, if you will, over to the receiver that then can back that out and send that fast, much more, much quicker to a centralized exchange or, you know, whatever else it is and exchange that for Bitcoin. Boom. Your transaction just occurred faster. Right. The, the transaction fees were lower. So what does that do for PIVX? It means it almost becomes an intermediary coin, right? It becomes the means of actually transferring your value and it's done privately, right? So that's the other thing too. So it's not just it's fast. It's not just it's a lower transaction fee. It's privately. And I think when people begin to see, oh, this is really valuable. If I want to send X amount of value to somebody over there, Bitcoin yeah, I have the Bitcoin that might be by store of wealth, but when I actually want to transmit it, I can do it through ZPIV. Why? Because it provides privacy, it's faster, and it's going to cost me less. Done. Right? So thus, what does that do for PIVX? You know, we can speculate. Um, trade volumes, right? If nothing else, all of a sudden, you're going to see the volumes of trade go from being on exchanges to people holding it in their wallets or hodling. If you want to say hodling, we can say hodling, right? So in their wallets and thus they're empowering themselves. Why? Because, Hey, maybe I want to be a Z, like maybe I want to be a master node owner because I want to be able to help that ecosystem go. Right. And so all of a sudden then demand for PIV goes up, right? The transactional volumes that are occurring within the network go up. And then this is the beautiful thing too, the economic model. Since we burn our transaction fees, right? So if you're minting ZPIV, there's a fee. But if you're also sending normal PIV, there's a fee as well. And those are burned because we, we don't have to incentivize miners, right? Since they're, our validators are getting the block reward, we don't have to pay miners. So we burn our transaction fees, which means the coin supply, right? That emission rate will be linear. However, the coin supply can start to go down and become deflationary. So thus, the value of the coin itself has that beautiful potential to rise and rise and rise. Um, yeah, nice answer. And I'm, this question is about ZPOS. Um, the recent announcement to, of ZPOS block reward system made Pivians expect more. Uh, what is the main purpose of providing more ZPIF staking compared to the reg just regular? POS staking. Yep. If it is recommended to users to help choose ZPOS over POS and to increase number of ZPOS users, 
Is provision of 50% more rewards to ZPIF staking just a temporary event or a permanent reward system? If all the current PIVX staking users shift to ZPIF staking due to the more rewards, um, then the resulting fewer PIF staking users, then I think it may be occur to solve the security problem because the POS users, staking users are going less. So what do you think about the sol solving the problem of the security problem? Um, so if, to my understanding with um, the ZPOS or, or ZPOS, um, yeah, uh, that it, it's still proof of stake, right? So when you're staking PIV versus staking the zero coin PIV, it's you're still involved in the proof of stake validation, right? So from a security standpoint, whether let's say you have 40% of the network that's staking PIV or 40% of the network that's staking ZPIVs, uh, from a security standpoint, the network will still remain as stable as it was before because you're still having the amount of validators that are staking in the network. The, the difference comes in this way. People who are staking PIV, as we talked, as you mentioned, their block reward will be two PIV, right? If you're staking your Z PIV, right? So that's PIV that you've taken, run through the zero coin protocol in your wallet, and now you have Z PIV. If you're staking those, you get three, three PIV. And, and what we kind of had talked about a little bit before is what's the reason for that from a PIVX ethos is this. What we're doing now is taking the pool of privacy PIV, the Z PIV, right? So you can say, so think of it this way. The public PIV, the public PIVX is a PIV. The private coin or the private PIV is the Z PIV. By staking and incentivizing proof of stake staking of the Z PIV, you're increasing that pool, that coin supply of those privacy coins. So from a network security standpoint, nothing is changing in terms of staking, right? And securing the network. What's changing is the size of that pool of privacy coin within PIVX, right? So the size of Z PIVs that are available to the network and thus you, me, and anyone else that comes in. Okay, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, as you say, as you say, I think the purpose of a uh, Zpause is to shift the users from spending uh, PIV to more towards ZPIV, eventually increasing the pool of the uh, ZPIV coin supply. Uh, and is my next question is some sort of like related to this, but when the network reaches about 12 transactions or four private transactions, right? It yep. burns as much coin as it generates. Yeah. But, uh, however, when the number of transactions increase over these numbers, uh, technically more coins will be burnt than emitted. Yeah. Uh, I believe this will lead to the deflation. Um, deflation may be a critical to micropayments, especially more critical. I think it's going to be more critical to the PIVX community due to the fact that PIVX currently uses only eight whole number denominations for if you want to send uh, PIVX anonymous through GPIV. Uh, do you share this problem? Um, if you do, uh, what's your plan to solve this issue? Um, so the so this is sort of the um, this is a strength of PIVX, right? In, and I'm going to answer it from from a different perspective. I think since we are a decentralized autonomous organization, right? Since we have the ability, we have a built-in governance. We have the ability to vote to submit proposals and, and to basically, as a collective, decide how the community moves, right? With that as well, we have a robustness to make changes, right? And we can make them pretty quickly versus other cryptocurrencies where things can tend to be somewhat centralized or it's a top-down organizational structure. That to say this, as the circulating supply of those privacy, of the ZPIV increases, we thus have a much more robust pool of those privacy coins, right? It's much larger. The ability then to look into expanding the set size could come into play, right? Right now, it's done to really maintain, because we don't have as robust of a network of say, let's say 40 million or 20 million or 30 million PIV are now ZPIV. That's a much larger population and pool of privacy coins. 
At that point, it's conceivable to say, yeah, we can increase the number of denominations. Why? Because as a network, we're now confident we can maintain that high level threshold of privacy and anonymity for the entire network, right? So that is one, you know, that's one answer for you to say, hey, you could increase those denomination numbers. The other, the other aspect, um, and I, I'm losing my train of thought real quick. I'm cycling back to your initial question. Um, remind me again. I'm sorry. I yeah. just like, I so, went off onto a, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, if the transaction, number of transaction increase, TPS basically uh, increases. Yes. Yeah. Inflationary. Uh, yeah. 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 So to that point, yeah, exactly. So absolutely. When we hit that threshold of above, you know, it's around 12, 13, 14 transactions, or if you're doing four private transactions a second, the coin supply, right? The, the emission rate is basically becoming neutralized, right? So the amount of coins from the block reward going out are also are equal to the amount of coins that are being burned by all those network fees. So above that, right, the coin supply starts to get diminished and go lower and thus a deflationary coin supply. The effect on the network in terms of the total coins that have been emitted, uh, it, it, unless, and we could speculate, unless we all of a sudden see hundreds of transactions a second or thousands of transactions a second, the, the impact on the total coin supply isn't going to be felt right away, right? Um, you know, we had a couple blocks where I think nine PIV were burned during that block, et cetera. On the grand scheme, you're not, we don't feel those in the network yet. So as we hit those thresholds, then we as the community can then go, okay, how do we feel, right? How is the network handling this? Are we burning too many coins? Does the community value having a, you know, a coin supply that's about a 4% inflation rate, right? Or is the community saying, no, we like the fact that there's now less coins in circulation, so the value is going up or whatever else it is. We don't know. You know a lot of us in Pivx, and I think you know, some of you, we, we're looking more for the usefulness of this rather than a store of value. Like it's an incredible store of value. We'll talk, you know, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. However, from the usefulness as a transfer, right? Point of sale, maintaining privacy, maintaining that transaction speed, maintaining the low fees. If we become too deflationary, then yeah, at that point, sending a whole PIV becomes crazy, right? Now we're starting to reach the thresholds of like a Bitcoin, right? Of, hey, it's, it's too costly. Or in order to maintain my privacy, like I can only send one PIV, which is now worth a hundred dollars, uh, right? So that that then becomes the as those I'll say challenges come into the network, I sort of have the full confidence in the development team as it stands today, as it continues to grow to meet those challenges and say, okay, how do we overcome this? Yeah, Brian. Yeah, it seems like the the previous communities so far uh, did a well job uh, reaching consensus or pushing, tackling the problem, and eventually figuring out a solution. Uh, yeah. One will be the uh, I guess the uh, community design governance. Uh, the all the mass nodes unanimously voted in favor of providing their voting rights, sharing their voting rights with the all the other users. Uh, um, and I think the I know that the community design governance proposal is in currently in pro, uh, prog progress, and I think it will be very wonderful and a great uh, role model for the other projects in this uh, in this industry. Uh, however, I cannot stop from thinking that the uh, we have uh, quite a lot of underlying assumption uh, we are taking for granted. Uh, uh, especially on getting consensus, um, there may be a conflict of interest. But we, it seems like we're thinking, you know, everybody will act good and consensus will be established eventually. Uh, but in the, from your from the Pivx is a past records. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, but so, I mean, back to the uh, community design governance, how is it going? Um, and this is a question from the audience that we uh, we posted on. Uh, uh, as a form of a Google Forms, how is it going to be different from the other governance system? Sure. Um, so as it stands today, um, there's, I think, four proposals that have been submitted into GitHub, um, into the Pivx GitHub. 
sort of outlying different viewpoints of a governance model or potential governance models that are, I will say, much more inclusive of a broader audience of your coin community, right? So currently as it stands today, you have you have a whole spectrum, right? You have coins that have no governance. And by governance, I mean this. Governance meaning how you make decisions and then how you implement them, right? And specifically within cryptos, how you make a decision about the cryptocurrency or blockchain and then how you implement them. So for instance, we have, we have blockchains and cryptocurrencies that have a governance that's one person. Right, that makes the decisions and says, "This is what we're going to do," and then it's impl maybe implemented or whatever it is. Right? Then you also have miners. Right? Miners can all of a sudden band together and say, "No, we're going to do this." Right? And then thus you have that directionality of the coin and the ethos. Then you can get human dynamic and bickering, et cetera, et cetera. Then all of a sudden, with this, you know, and again, it's it's a it's a tribute to Dash. The development of this technology called a master node, right, which thus began to allow communities or people to inside that network, inside the blockchain, submit a proposal, right, submit it to the chain to then allow the community to vote on it, right. The thing is that was exclusive to master nodes, so it's a huge step ahead, right. If you think about it, it's now all of a sudden you have a structure and a mechanism by which you can make decisions and then implement it, right? So that was that, that, that leap forward and that governance. What PIVX is striving to do, and by that vote of community design governance, as you said, to take it further and say, hey, what we have now is beautiful. We have a governance model. You can make decisions and implement it. The power is still centralized, as it were, to those with 10,000 PIV. And you know, in, other, in other coins, it's still people who hold a decent supply of those coins. What Pivx has said is, look, in order to maximize the resources, and by that I mean people, right? People who have ideas, people have passions, they get insights, they see awarenesses. You know, you come from different backgrounds than I come from, so you see the world very differently than I do. That's valuable data and input into the project. Right. So as it stands right now, the only people who can vote in most of these projects and even in Pivx right now are the masternode holders. But what we in Pivx have said is, no, we need to take that a step further and figure out a way that anybody then can have an input back into the ecosystem to make an input and not just get lost. Right. So that's the point of if we just design a binary system, a yes, no vote. Again, it can work. However, we've seen time and time again that that data just gets lost. And in a yes, no system, you don't allow for other network effects to take place and capturing that data for the long haul. So we're currently in this phase of, and, and this actually came out of my New York meetup. Um, I was up in New York last week, um, sitting down talking about this. And, and a guy said, look, you're basically where we were 200 some years ago in 1776. You know, the, the birthing of America, trying to figure out a new model of governance. And you're working on that again and we're like yeah we are and the thing is we have now a blockchain and this tech medium to explore that so that is a great statement to say we're in this experiment right there's a passion to allow people to have input directly back into the ethos of pivx and we're still figuring that out right so i know there's some work being done on the new governance website um you know for proposals and submitting you know, having the in-wallet proposals and that submission tab is going to make it easier for users. However, the other, the challenge comes this. It's one thing to come up with a philosophy and an ethos of how to do it. Then comes the fun part of how do you code that into a blockchain, right? And so that's sort of this balanced structure of going, this is what we're figuring out collectively um, within the Pivx ecosystem to say, hey, so yeah, go to the GitHub and take a look at those proposals. You can see the thought and the time that's gone into trying to figure out, is it a binary? Is it multiple tiers? Is it a weighted average of votes, et cetera? Those are all available on the GitHub to take a look through of sort of what the Pivx community has come up with currently. Um, and then there's a lot of discussion still going on of how to implement that into the actual ecosystem of Pivx. 
Yeah, um, I personally think this will be very revolutionary. And then uh, if it comes out successfully, uh, I think it will be very good role model for other uh, uh, other other projects to look up to, you know, definitely. Uh, and this is uh, another question. Yes, starting from the block number, I believe it's 648,000, PIVX community agreed to half the block reward from 10 PIVs to five PIVs. Uh, what's the story behind this uh, consensus? And uh, is this there a possibility for another having maybe? Um, so to answer your question, sure. Like, you know, there's, there's always that opportunity because we are um, that decentralized governance, right? So if, if there's enough of the community that says, hey, I think the emission rate's too high, um, a proposal could be submitted if enough of the community values that and thinks it's the right way to move forward, then absolutely it could change. So that's one of the crazy but also beautiful things about PIVX is as a community, if you're a holder, right, if you're an owner of PIVX, then in theory, I mean, you could sit idly by and not care about the project and just hoping for profits to come and et cetera, et cetera. However, there's also the ability to be vested, right, to be part of it and communicate and say, yeah, no, 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 maybe we need to have it or maybe we need to double it. Don't know. That option is there from a community feedback to actually impart that into the community. So um, the reason that, that if you look, it got tiered down to why, um, that's a great question for you know why the community voted at that point to cut the block reward down. My personal guess, and again, I was not around or privy in those conversations at that time, is people were looking at the inflation rate this is just my guess, is that they're looking at the inflation rate and saying 10 PIV right now is going to put it at a, you know, eight, nine, 10% inflation rate, which depending on what, you know, economic model you come from and, you know, study, a lot of, a lot of those economic models say for a currency, right, to lubricate commerce, having an inflation, right, or having a coin supply that's around 4% of your total supply a year provides a nice lubricant for commerce right to prevent the hoarding or holding and without any transaction value back into the ecosystem right so i think my my gut sense is that's why that the community largely decided is they were saying we're we're at too high of an inflation rate we need to we need to chop this down lower but again you know that's something that i can reach out to the pivots community and say hey does any, do you guys remember when this was done what was going on around that time and why that collective decision was made. And again, we can post that up for you guys and say, yeah, this is, this is the feedback we got. So, yeah. So yeah, if we could get up, yeah. Other, other, other insights on that, they'll be yeah. helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Next question is about like PIVIS seems to be promising and fascinating as other privacy coins as such as Zcash, Monero, Dash. Like, however, PIVIX total market cap is significantly lower than those other coins that I just, I just mentioned. Yep. Like, why is the reason for that? Um, multiple reasons that we can kind of put piece together. Um, one would be duration on the market, right? So um, PIVX as a cryptocurrency, its duration and availability on the market is, you know, we're, we're younger, right? If you want to say from that standpoint. So where Dash and, and Monero, et cetera, have been on the market and available for longer, um, we're, we're younger to, to the industry. So that's, that's one component. Um, you know, an, another component, um, you know, you can look at and say, all right, we are proof of stake. So there's a lot of people who still are not familiar with the proof of stake model. Um, and while I believe the industry is going to change, I think you're going to see a lot of coins and projects that are going to be looking to prove, I mean, even Ethereum's talking about going to proof of stake. So you're going to see communities that are going to be moving to that model, exploring that. Still, a lot of the mindset is about, oh, I can mine this, right? I've got all my, here you go, boom. Uh, I think that's there. The other component um, is, is this. You know, we, we in PIVX largely uh, for the past year have worked with, a fairly small budget, right? So projects like Monero, projects like Dash, et cetera, when we were ramping up a lot of the marketing, we're ramping up a lot of the visions, et cetera, we're we were working with smaller budgets, right? And this isn't this isn't to downplay 
anything other than say, hey, if you've got a million dollar budget a month to do marketing and spends and development versus 20,000, 15,000, it can make a difference, right? Although you could also say with a million dollars, you can waste a lot, right? So it goes hand in hand. However, what we spent a lot of time doing is this. We spent a lot of time building up the brand, right? Building up the feeling, the value proposition of what Pivx is. In the meantime, the developers were working incredibly on technology, right? And so I think that's why a lot of people in Pivx are really looking forward to the end of quarter one, quarter two, three, because now what's changing is that's where you're seeing, hey, Pivx is showing up at, we're going to conferences. We're doing a lot more interviews. We're getting the traction. We're getting the notoriety. Why? Because the tech's solid. We're starting to shift and say, hey, this foundation's been put. Now people can hear about it. So the Pivians who have been in for a while going, yeah, I, I, I love this project. It's got incredible tech. Or I came in because of the feel. Now you're starting to see that tide go, oh man, this crypto is pioneering in privacy. It's pioneering, as you said, it's a jack of all trades, right? It's got governance. It's got privacy. It's got low transactions. It's fast, right? So, And it's got a crazy good feel about it. Yeah, and that's what now is getting further and further out into crypto, into the world. You know, that's why we are on stage with, you know, influencers, et cetera. Um, that's a lot of the push for this year is to say, here's, here, here we are. Like, this is an incredible project, but we don't have to flaunt it because we already know it. And so we just have to put the marketing out as we're doing to say, here we go, guys. Here we go. So it's more of a, I guess you could say, a longer tail vision of building something that's much more sustainable rather than going for the flash in the pan, drive your market cap up, and then try and backfill with technology and et cetera, et cetera. This is the long build for a sustainable currency community, et cetera. But, yeah, that's, I, but that's my opinion. That's my view. Yeah, I think when it comes to just raising a capital and then uh, or building community, I think a building community should definitely come first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, um, since there was no ICO on PVX, like, what I personally think about the easy, easiest way to make PVX more available is to um, establish partnership with payment available coins such as 10x or Centra. So, do you have any position or partnership thinking about the payments coin? Um, I, I know a little bit. So I know that there had been some um, negotiations and some talks in the past. I don't know what happened with those, to be quite frank. Uh, I, I, I believe that there was some work being done with 10x. Uh, and again, this could just be third party information that's floating around. Um, so I'm not quite sure, but yeah. So um, there's also cards like the Euclid card, right? So being able to be used, you know, at point of sale terminals on a debit card, etc. Um, there's the living room of Satoshi. So it, again, if you're in Australia, which is great, if you're in Australia, you can actually pay your all of your bills with Piv right directly. Um, so yeah, to your to your point though, being able to be more useful at point of sale, right? So being able to be more transparent so merchants can use it, so people can access PIV, that's a huge barrier. And that's a, that's a barrier for most of crypto as well. Um, so this also then speaks to some of the other projects that are going on where you have, say, a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer means of getting PIV, right? So you know we've, we were talking about that, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it in here, like the whole Unity project, right? So where you have a an ability now for everyday ordinary people to access PIV, to be able to buy PIV, um, and then transmit that and then use that, that's gonna be huge to lower that barrier for people. Because again, I'm sure you know you guys get it as well. New people in a crypto go, well, how do I get it, right? And not just Bitcoin, they wanna know like, how do I get that altcoin or the coin you're talking about? And thus begins the process of going, all right, first you have to do this and get an account and then do that and then transfer it here. Well, projects like that, those decentralized exchanges, whether it's a ZDEX, you know, or whether it's something like the Unity project, right, where you then have that ability to go, no, nope, it's direct, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, it's decentralized, it's in, out, and now you have it. That's going to that's going to basically lower that bar of entry for more people to come in. And thus that sets up the ability for merchants to go, now I've got customers that can get in here with Piv. Now I can accept it. Here we go.
Um, next question is about um, Jonathan Boodle and joining the Pivx team recently. Yeah. In yeah. Pivx page, <laughs> <laughs> in Pivx page, it states like Boodle's work will be fo focused in integrating breakthrough blood proof into Pivx custom zero coin protocol. Yeah, but thereby decreasing Z, Z Piv transaction significantly. But uh, overall, uh, how is going to impact Z Piv transaction? immediately or like and will Z Boodle's work perhaps may make any alteration to Pivx roadmap? Um so a lot of the work that that he's doing and again this is what's incredible, right? So now we have two cryptographers in Pivx, right? And the cool thing is both him and Mary collaborated together on some of their academic research. So you've got this again, it's community, right? So now you've got these community people that know each other actually working on implementing technologies and pioneering within Pivx, which is incredible. Um, and that's a huge, huge shout out. Congrats, like huge praise for the developers and the team that work to get those people into Pivx because again, it's it's a testament to their vision and passion. So, but yeah, so so Jonathan um, coming in. So a lot, of, a lot of the work, and I'm still reading up on Bulletproof because again, developers and this is all happening so fast. It's like, oh, I got to get caught up on this so I can actually speak to it. So the little that I know is that the bulletproofs, um, you, you can think about what's going on in zero coin, these massive proofs, like these map, that's what the proof is. Like, so here you go. It's this massive computation that it does. It takes more memory than the normal transactions. So what, what the bulletproofs, and this is the layman's terms, basically it's going to shrink that down. So the amount of computation that it takes to actually validate a zero coin spend, a transaction, a mint, et cetera, gets shrunk down, right? So just like a bullet, much faster, much less in terms of computational time, energy, et cetera. Um, so what does it do for, for PIVX and for ZPIV and ZPIV staking is one, much less demand on the network, right? So you're not going to have the master nodes in the network requiring as much, you know, memory and the transaction sends to faster, right? So you'll be able to mint and send much faster than you currently are in, in ZPIV and thus in any of these other coins that are using zero coin or even any other privacy protocol. So what you're potentially looking at is having, again, not, not just pioneering proof of stake because now we are, you know, zero coin proof of stake. You will have staking of that, which again, Pivx is pioneering, and the smallest transactional sends and faster computations of this entire ecosystem itself, right? So then all of a sudden, what does it do? Well, if you're shrinking down those memories and you're making the trans and you're allowing the transactions to be faster, then you allow for more and more and more technology to be implemented into Pivx that we haven't even thought of yet, right? So this is one of the things of it's like, Bitcoin's becoming reactionary, right? It's, oh man, we're having these problems. Now we've got to figure out solutions to these network problems or these lags or the delays, et cetera. It's almost a flip of what's happening in Pivx. Pivx is basically going, we're following sort of a gut feel of, no, we got to innovate, innovate, innovate. And what's happening is we're pushing those frontiers. And so instead of being reactionary, we're, we're proactive, right? We're saying, hey, when Pivx is doing a thousand transactions a second, if it's, if it's slow, then people aren't going to use it, right? And especially it's a privacy coin. So, hey, hmm, how, do we, how do we get ahead of that before we even have that problem? Well, then you get guys and gals in like Mary and Jonathan that can work and collaborate together to speed up your transactions to reduce the sizes of those privacy mints and sends, and boom, now you're already ahead of the curve, right? So, and this also cycles back to something we were talking about earlier. I think there's 15 or 20 clones of Pivx, not currently where we are as a technology, but there's already been 15 to 20 clones of Pivx. Why? Right? It pretty much means you're doing something right, right? You're leading you're role model here. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're setting the bar higher. And so other coins are going, yep, we want that. We want to build on that for our own you know, purpose or whatever else it is. So if anything else, like I look at that and all, all other sides, all other things aside, it's like, you know, uh, imitations, the highest form of flattery, right? So I'll take it. It means that we're setting precedence in crypt 
and cryptocurrencies as a whole. So. Yeah, I think, yeah, PEVEX is definitely a trailblazer to this industry, uh, for real. Yeah, the next question is about, like, it seems like PEVEX has a strong community composed of enthusiastic PIVX, PIVIANS, and PIVX YouTube channel is consistent, consistently providing useful information to PIVIANS. I'm personally enjoying what PIVX is highly caring about healthy community. And like, uh, also, and PIVX is currently supporting different communities, including Polish soccer team and PIVX Panthers. And what does community mean to PIVX? And what is proposed to, like, trying to achieve by nourishing different communities across the world? Uh, that's a great question. So, um, at the end, at the beginning and end of every day, right? So we wake up and then we go to sleep and we wake up and we go to sleep. And in between those moments, we're engaging with ourselves, with people, you know, computers, technology, et cetera, but we're people, right? So whether we wake up, go to sleep, we're humans. One of the, one of the lines I say is we're humans engaging in this endeavor together. And specifically within PIVX, we're a bunch of people in this container of what is PIVX, exploring it, working together. The thing is, it's technology, right? So at the end of the day, if we sacrifice us as people just to get ahead or, or just to maybe you know, push the value of the coin up, whatever, three Satoshis, whatever, but divorce the fact that we're humans and that relational component, then we're losing out on the bigger picture, right? So the bigger picture being, we want to be useful. We want to be something that people value. Because at the end of the day, people ascribe value, right? All of this stuff only has value because we, we deem it has value, right? So yeah, we can argue over, well, yeah, it's blockchain. And so there it provides value, et cetera. But at the end of the day, that's great. But if we didn't value it, then it would have no value, right? As people. So that human connection Right, and I, I, I often say this, it's the marriage, right? We have an ability as humans to basically take the yin and yang. We have the ability to marry the, the human component with incredible technology right now, right? So if we, if we swing the pendulum way high and only focus on tech, et cetera, but lose the human component of what we can do to empower ourselves and people, and we've, we've missed a higher resonance. We've missed a higher attraction to the 99% of the world that doesn't know about crypto yet, right? Most of these people aren't never going to do as much information diving that you guys do, right? Like, let's face it, most people won't do that. They can, but they will choose not to. So what are they gonna, what are they gonna find and flock to? Well, where the energy moves, right? And if you look at human history, energy will go in a few places, and a lot of times it'll go to where there's comfort, and trust and stability, right? And that feel of connection and community. Not everybody will go there, but a lot, a lot of people do. And more and more people are looking for that. And so that's why for PIVX, it's, that's valuable. And when we go to events and we talk to people, and even you've just said it, like, right? That's really, really, really valuable for us as a community and thus as a project. But it's, it's, it takes both, right? We can't just say, we've got an incredible community and then our technology just be flat, right? So that's the beauty of what PIVX can provide is the ability to say, here, we're humans, we're on this endeavor and go take a look, go take a look at our GitHub, go take a look at a roadmap, go take a look at what's being implemented and developed. So yeah, you can enjoy this community aspect with the surety that you're being backed by an incredible development team and technology being implemented that we, you know, we just talked about. It's it's pioneering in cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Uh, my question is more specific to a Korean market, I guess. Uh, there are a lot of enthusiastic Korean PBNs uh, here in Korea. Uh, what's the PayBex community plan to reach out to them and then uh, bringing them together and creating more energy in, in this country? Um, I'm all ears. Right, so this is this is I'm 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 one Pivian amongst a sea of purple, right? And so 
you know, I do a lot of the YouTube videos and like scene, but I, I got here largely because I just, we started doing things, right? And we, you know, ingrained in community and, and you, you, you go, you, you put ideas forth and then people go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, the beautiful thing is what you're just saying is however the Pivot community can support the Korean, like for you guys, can support those communities there, we're all ears, right? So that's why like, you know, the value of doing the Polish soccer teams and surfers and, you know, there's more, more of those community outlets. Why? Because we need that. We need those rootedness into our local communities, right? And so, yeah, like for those bridges to occur, if, you, if there's people that have ideas, you know, the, the Pivians that are in Korea and South Korea, like we need those. We need your ideas. We need your inputs. If you say, hey, we need, we need support for meetups or we, we want to do X, Y, Z, that's the beauty of PIVX, right? And then those relationships can form. The, the, the largest thing is when we stop communicating, and I know like sometimes there can be language barriers, et cetera, but we can find the ways to communicate and say, okay, let's find the commonality. Let's communicate our needs. Let's communicate our visions and let's build it together. So basically that's a long way to say, however, PIVX as, you know, and even me personally, however we can support, I can support. That's, that's, the, that's the conversation. That's the discussion. Okay, Brian. Um, I mean, before we start this interview, I told you it's going to be one hour, maybe maximum, but I think we're going a little bit over an hour. <laughs> uh, please excuse us if, uh, if you're taking your time. We just want to pick up just a few questions from yeah. the, our audience. Um, I actually posted a chat here. I think you love this. I think Pivot, the, a username, uh, Chi E, calls Pivis. Pivix is a Satoshi's true vision. <laughs> And um, here's and here are some questions from um, our Korean audience. So Pivx is the uh, first coin. I mean, we talked about this uh, first POS coin to uh, implement zero coin protocol. And the zero zero coin protocol is well known for its uh, zero proof knowledge. And uh, theoretically, it uh, it proves it guarantees a perfect anonymity. Do you think this uh, and automated technology will uh, surpass those of Dash, Monero? Um, so in terms of how robust our privacy is, we are, we, we're already surpassed Dash. Um, so Dash, Dash is largely, you know, it's, it's a gross exaggeration, but you can think of it as um, the, the, the game you would play with cups, right? So let's say you got three cups and you put a ball under one and you mix them, right? And you say, okay, which... Which cup is the ball under? Yeah, right. That's that's an exaggeration, but it, let's say you had you know fifty or hundred cups. That's basically dash. That's the privacy. That's the coin mixing that goes on in dash. That's the privacy protocol, right? So what Pivx has done is already surpassed that, right? The zero coin protocol academically vetted about a zero proof transaction breaking that link back to you. So right there. So then you know the, what you just said about Monero. Monero using, you know, their technology, um, you know, it's, it's different. It's different than zero coin. The thing with Monero um, is there, there's, a, there's a few things, right? So it, I would say, you know, in terms of a privacy protocol, but you've got Monero doing very, very solid privacy protocol layers. You have Pivx, zero coin implementation, solid, very, very solid. So it's, you know, which one's better or worse? They're both, let's just say they're both here, right? They're both way up there, okay? Now what you can then say is, okay, as a coin, what's more usable, right? What's more end user friendly? What has faster transactions? What, what is sustainable for the long haul? All of those other factors then that come in. So on a privacy level, you know, I guess you could argue back and forth which one's better or worse. I would say, okay, they're both, they're different. It's apples, orange, but very, very high in terms of their privacy. After that, then, then you got to start to explore what makes it more robust, et cetera, et cetera. So, and second question is about the uh, rewards to the uh, to the uh, both master nodes and the staking nodes. Um, well, well, this uh, this guy talked about CISO model, but uh, I think I was skip that. So basically, the question is, which do you think 
Which do you prefer, being a master node or being a staking node? Uh, Could be a quite obvious question, right? Yeah, that's, I mean, I think, I think this guy is trying to ask your personal preference. Uh, master node versus staking? Yeah. Um, well, it, it, it largely depends, right? So for some people right now, economically, obtaining a master node can be out of reach. For some people, it's easy, right? So your, your personal, where you're coming from as an individual, that's going to have a big impact, right? So of your ability to either obtain 10,000 PIV, which is what, a, around 60,000 US dollar? I, I don't know what it, you know, that translates, um, you know, for local currency. Um, for, for you guys, but that's a, that's a fairly high barrier, right? For, for some people. So at that point, that's the beauty though of PIVX. You can stake with just one PIV, right? So from an, from an economic individual standpoint, you have that ability to participate in earning block rewards. Um, yeah, ZPIV staking, once that's implemented is going to be very profitable, right? Uh, compared to just staking and even running a master node, right? Cause a master node is going to get two, ZPIV staking is going to get three. So, you know, my expectation is you might see a lot of people start to stake their ZPIV. However, as we talked about, if you can run a master node, you are getting, and most likely you'll get your two PIV every day, day and a half, right, for running your master node. And then when the ZDEX is up and running, again, and we'll figure that, and we said, we'll talk about that, what those transaction fees are going to look like. So, what that value would be for master node. However, there'll be that other layer of earning rewards by running your master node. So, um, you know, my personal opinion, I mean, it, quite frankly, if you want my, my answer, I actually, and maybe I shouldn't announce this on air, but I'll just announce it on air. I have both. So, um, you know, and again, that's, that's one of those things where, and that's just me. Um, that's my choice of saying I'm supporting the network in both ways. Yeah. Have both. Why not? That's one, right? Yeah. So the other, the other thing too is if you look at it, if you're staking, you in theory have more fluidity, right? So if you're staking in a way and you need to do sends or you need to transfer into ZPIV, you have that option versus running a master node. Of course, you can back it out, except now you're removing that escrow. You're moving that chunk out. So um, the, other, the other component too is this, right? And this might, be, this might matter for some people. Um, on the roadmap, you're going to have the ability to put your master node collateral onto a ledger and still run your master node, right? So from if you're personally really, really concerned about holding PIV even in your wallet, right, and you want it offline cold storage, well then running the master node, you're gonna have the ability to run your master node, but have your 10,000 collateral off, so. Um, this would be the last question. Um, yeah. What would, what would you like the most? Oh, oh, oh. Like, Sorry, real quick. This is the beauty of PIV. I just had somebody ping me, right? So here, updates, updates to the reward, the block reward. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is this is this is something that I completely overlooked. Aha. So if so here's here's this actually is kind of a seesaw, just a different way. So if if the block is solved by a ZPIV staker, three will go to that ZPIV staker, two goes to the master node, and one will go to the budget, right? Or up to one will go to the budget. However, if that block is solved by the PIV staker, two go to the PIV staker, three go to the master node, and one. So thus, it's really gonna, it, there is a little bit of a seesaw based on if, this, if the validation occurs by a Z PIV staker or if it occurs by a, a normal PIV staker. Oh, so, oh, okay, I get it, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure the audience okay. got it too. So last question. Uh, actually, two more questions. And yeah. okay, okay. What would you like to? What do you like the most about working with Pivx? Um, I'm my own boss, mm -hmm. right? And, and you think about it from like what, and that there's so much wrapped up into that. But I I get to empower myself, and I also have the ability to just be myself, right? And thus hopefully empower other people. And the thing is at the end of that, here's the thing, do I love Pivx? Sure. But my, my, what matters more to me is that people ask questions, that people are engaged, that people have the opportunity
opportunity to be empowered themselves. And that might not mean that they actually ever come into Pivx. Would I love them to? Sure. Why wouldn't I? But at the end of the day, it's about being yourself and engaging with other people so that they thus feel empowered, right? I do believe that Pivx provides an incredible, an incredible opportunity for people to empower themselves. Why? Because I think it's an incredible community to learn about cryptocurrencies and blockchain, right? It is. It's one of the most robust, open. Yeah, look, we, we're humans. We all have disagreements and there's always going to be issues. However, with that, I think it's an incredible community that cares and is passionate about being supportive, right? Our support team is incredible as well. It's got incredible technology. So if you're coming in, learning about cryptos and blockchain, you're going to be in a space where you're on the cutting edge, not just in crypto, right? Because you're in crypto, but because you're in PIVX and learning about proof of stake and privacy and transactions and economic models, et cetera. And then if you run the blockchain by run, you know, downloading a wallet, running the entire blockchain, because it's proof of stake, you get paid or you can earn the block reward for it. So you're in control and you're empowered. You can run your blockchain, which means you're in control of your currency. You can get earning rewards for doing it. And with community design governance, et cetera, you will actually have a voice and say in the project itself. So for me, it's about you get to be yourself. You get to show up. You get to basically pour as much energy in as you want. However, when you're in a community of people that are working together on those levels, you can't help but just to be happy and be joyful and thankful that you're in a spot and time in your life where you get to do this. So that's, for me, that's what, you know, a lot of what Pivx has encompassed. So. Yeah, sounds awesome. I mean, uh, we really envy you, I guess. <laughs> and Come in! Come in! <laughs> More. <laughs> One last question. We asked this question to everybody uh, we interviewed. Uh, everybody gave us different answers, but we have to ask you, what percent of asset do you own as a cryptos? Um, you mean versus non-cryptos? Well, what percent of your entire asset do you own as a crypto? That was question, but you can answer it in any form, uh, of, oh, any wait, form so how you much like. Are you, are you asking how much Piv is my assets uh, of all of crypto, or how much crypto do I currently hold versus like my other assets? Yeah, besides let, let, later, uh, later, the latter is what I'm yeah. asking. So I'll give you I'll give you a little backstory, right? Um, <laughs> so here you go, right? This is the you know do not I'm not a financial planner. This is not financial advice. Do not do as I do. <laughs> Right. We should put Full a warning disclaimers. on a subtitle, but uh... Full disclaimers. Um, <laughs> I I follow my gut. All right. So here's here's the thing. I follow my gut. Like I think we you know we're all waking up to and privy to. Um, I ended up selling my car. <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally selling my car. Um, uh, you know, again, it's just incredible to be able to do that. But sell my car to get into crypto. Right. To basically get into positions in various cryptocurrencies. Um, and that was a little over a year ago. So incredible timing, right? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I value cryptocurrencies more than I value you know, a US dollar at this point. So I, if, if it's up to me, and I won't disclose like, the amounts of how much, but you know, in terms of value, yeah, there's, I have more value in cryptos than I do in, in, in anything else at this point. So that being said, my personal belief as well is use the value that can come from cryptocurrencies to push back into your communities, to yourself, right, to et cetera. So one of the things that I'm really passionate about is being self-sustained. So that's from, a, that's from an environmental standpoint. That's from basically looking to pull where I live, et cetera, off grid, grow my own food, et cetera. Why? Because now I can then push more energy back out into the universe, right? Into people, et cetera. So, and, but that's, that's my view, right? So from that standpoint though, I will have value and, you know, from an account standpoint, a decent means out of crypto. But what I value more is the ability to actually, as I said, be empowered, self-sustained. So therefore I can actually drive energy and worth back into people. I think you're muted. 
sorry yeah yeah if you're not gonna spend all your money you know, why not like at this moment yeah why not keep it a dollar i mean yeah while you can make more value out of cryptos or in terms of utility you can also do much better not just the financial incentives yeah right. uh yeah i think that that's it for the interview um Thank you for joining us, Brian. We loved it. Oh, uh, it's been great interview. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for you know having having me and on behalf of all of Pivx, you know having us on. I know we have some questions we have to get answers back for you guys. Um, so we'll stay in touch. Um, and yep. again, for anybody anybody watching, you are more than welcome to come in. Right? Like, it's we're Pivx. There, go to pivx.org, come into our Discord, come into our various social channels if you so want. And if you want to get part of the project, you absolutely can, you know, so more than welcome to. Okay. Can you say mm, Pivian stay purple for all? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to say that. Uh, so, you need to so, 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 yeah, wow, this is crazy. This is becoming the thing. But um, <laughs> so I, so this will be a personal, so to everybody watching, thank you for your time, your energy, um, you know, to you guys. I commend you for what you are doing um you know for yourselves for your communities um i've seen some of your interviews and you you ask very solid questions and provide a very very open forum for people to get information um and you know it, it's sort of a reflection to say and remember keep it purple people <laughs> great <laughs> great great all right uh we will keep in touch with brian but this is all right it, uh, it is for the interview yeah Beautiful. Right. Bye. Peace, guys. Bye. Peace. Bye.